Today, we are going to be looking at the course GST 122, known as what? The use of the library. Our topic for today is the structural organization of the library. Now, below is my outline. First of all, we're going to look at the administrative department of the library. Secondly, we look at the reader service division. Thirdly, we look at the technical service division. Fourthly, we look at the serial division. Fifth, we look at the boundary units. Then the last aspect, we're going to look at the special collection division. So, there is one thing I want you to know. That there is no library who doesn't have what? A structure. Now, the structure of a library depends on what? The size of such a library, the users of such a library, and then the building itself, and then the collections available. That is what will determine the structural organization of a library. So it is pertinent for you to know that what? There is no library that can come up without what? A structure. So now, let's proceed. Now, let's talk about the administrative department. Now, the administrative department, under the administrative department, this is where the school librarian's office, that is the chief librarian, that is where his department is located. Now, do you know why we see the school librarian's office? Because the type of library we are looking at as students is the word academic library. So the chief librarian office is located but in this department. What is the work of the chief librarian? He or she does what? Supervises all the activities of the library to ensure what? Efficiency in, and smooth running of the library. So that is what the administrative department does. That is where the head of the library stays. Secondly, we talk of, of the reader's service division. In the reader service division, that is another division of the library, another structure of the division. Now, this is the area where the activities of what those staffs of the library are what glaringly seen. This is where all their efforts, all their works are what glaringly seen. Now, this reader service division, for it to for us to make it more what, explicit and to make their function more known, we now tell you what that what it is made up of three units. The reader service division is made up of what? Three units. And these three units are going to be listed in the of the reader service unit. It has three divisions, but we have two already. We have the first one is what? Circulation or access units. Now, why do they call it circulation or access units? You may not know why they call it circulation or access units, but with their functions, you're able to know what it performs. Now, the circulation access units are in charge of what? borrowing and returning books. Students, students in university setting do have what their borrowers' tickets. So now, when you, they, they, these people are in charge of issuing the borrowers' ticket to a student. To a student, and now when they issue this, the, the borrower's ticket for you, and you see any book of your choice, a book on demand, what you go there, you register with your um, borrower's ticket, and they give you the book you want, and they tell you what on the day to what return the book. So this circulation access unit are in charge of what the borrowing and returning of what books. Another function of the circulation access unit, they check what user statistics. They try to know the number of people who goes into the library or what daily basis. They try to measure it. Like, if you notice, in most libraries of Nigerian institution, when it comes to close to exams, we see that the library is very, very well filled up. By then, the statistics will be so high. But when the exams are way 